I'm fairly certain that color variables, color tokens, color custom properties, whatever you want to call them, for transparencies are dead. They're no longer needed. They are just bloat, which means we can actually remove the entire library of transparency tokens from automatic CSS. I want to show you what we're going to replace it with, why it's better, why it's more flexible. And when you're using a forward thinking development environment like Etch that actually innovates around this stuff, why it's even faster and even e easier, okay? I'm gonna share my screen. I've got this hero section that is starting to come to life. We've got a great background image. We've got uh, a transparent overlay for our primary color. That's a very slight transparency. It's starting to help tie everything into our color system. And I have this box with text that you obviously cannot see because we need kind of a dark background behind the text. But I don't want to use a solid background color. I'm going to show you why, okay? And by the way, if you're new to all of this, I'm going to write background color right here, background color, and then we're going to put a token in here. What is a token? It's a placeholder for a value. It's very simple, right? Instead of using a hex code like you might see a bunch of people do, okay? That's static. Obviously, I don't want to litter 8,000 instances of this all over my website. And then what happens when I need a different shade? And what? And I, by the way, I can't even remember them. Nobody who can remember that, right? But what I can remember is var primary. Okay, and I can reference my primary color. And if I want the dark shade of that, I can just tack dark onto the end and I get primary dark, okay? These color tokens are very, very easy to use and they make the site insanely scalable and maintainable. Like I can come to my color system and I can just start retheming my entire website, no problems, okay? It makes this stuff very, very easy. I like the purple, let's get back to the purple. Okay, so we're gonna do that. Now, I, I don't want solid colors, as we talked about. I want a transparency here. Now, the question is, how do you get a transparency here? I'm gonna zoom back in again. Well, the answer is, in the old days, okay, in era three, let's say, uh, you would have an entire library of transparencies that were pre-configured from 10% to 90%, and you would need those for every color uh, that your website has configured and every shade if you really want all the options. But even at that, and, and by the way, we have this here, okay? If I did primary dark and I tacked on trans 50, for example, I would get the 50% transparency. Now that's starting to look actually pretty cool. It might need to be 60 or 70, okay? We would wanna dial this in, but there are some downsides to doing this. The downsides, number one, is you have to maintain an entire library of tokens for all, just for these transparencies. And you're probably not gonna use most of them. You're probably gonna use one or two or three or four. And then on top of that, the chances that you need the exact 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 is very low. And uh, if you, either, you either have to settle and be like, okay, I really need 65, or even 62.5 if you're, you know, OCD, you either have to like settle and say, okay, I'll go with 60, or you have to create a custom one and manage a bunch of extra custom ones aside from the library that is also available. So you end up with a lot of bloat. You end up with a lot of tokens that you're not using. And what I'm presenting in this video is that there is a better way. There is a better way thanks to the advancements in CSS. And all we have to do is commit to taking advantage of these advancements. We have to be willing to get rid of the old bloat and the old way of doing things. We have to adopt the new approach. And then, like I said earlier, in a visual development environment, hopefully you're using a visual development environment like Etch, where the developers are forward thinking and innovative and they're understanding that this is what you need to do. These kinds of things need to happen. How can the environment help the developer do their job easier and faster? We're going to take a look at all of that, okay? So what we're going to do is we're going to say all of this primary, dark, trans, 70, all of these variables, all of these tokens, they're not gonna exist anymore. Let's just get rid of them. How would I, add, oh, actually, let me pause here. I'm sorry, I, I, I'm not really, I'm not trying to like keep the answer from you. I just want you to have all of the context, okay? We did bake in a way where you can have custom transparencies. It requires an HSL function, but the problem is you can't just put in your color name like this, 
Uh, and then you would do a forward slash and do like 0. 0.5, okay? Uh, you can't you can't do that. Now, what we would need is what we call color partials. And color partials are parts of the color, okay? More tokens, extra tokens, right? And we created um, like primary H. And then we created primary S. And we created primary L. And when you do that... That's a lot of typing, isn't it? When you do that, you can actually get a custom transparency. Like I can do uh, 45% or 35% or 25 or 25.5. I can literally get whatever I want, not 0 0.25, 0 0.5, okay? Uh, 25, oh yeah, no, I'm sorry, it is. Uh, 25.5, you would need to do percent here, okay? Um, if you want to start doing fractions, I, you got to switch the syntax, okay? But look, I mean, I'm not limited here anymore. I'm not limited anymore. But what this requires is it requires color partials and it requires a bunch of typing and it's very messy. And then we were like, well, we can simplify that even further by just making an HSL string. And so that's another color partial called primary HSL, which you can pop in there. And now you can do this, which is definitely shorter, okay? Uh, but it's still a bit messy and it requires having another token system, okay? Like, again, color partials. There should be a way to just say, hey, I, I just want my primary color, but I just want... A, you know, a transparent version of it, or I want my primary dark, or I want my primary ultra dark, or I want my primary semi-dark, and I just want a transparent version of it. And there is a new way to do this with a function, a new CSS function called color mix. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how color mix works right now, but then we're going to talk about how the visual environment can actually come in and really, really, really help with this, because nobody's really going to want to type this, okay? So when you do the color mix function, you have to declare the color space that you want to do the trans the the translation in, okay, so to speak. So I'm going to say in OKLCH, all right, which is a much better color space, by the way, than HSL. We'll be switching to OKLCH with automatic CSS uh, with version 4.0. But we want to do this conversion in OKLCH. And now we're going to tell it what colors we want to mix together. So I'm going to say I want to mix my primary dark. And what the question is, what do I want to mix it with? Because you can mix it with black, you can mix it with red, you can mix it with any other token color, like your secondary or your tertiary or whatever. You can do a lot of stuff with color mix. Color mix is fantastic. What you can also mix is transparent. And then you just put in a percentage after your color and say, okay, 50% of my color and the rest is going to be transparent. And I can just dial this in now. And again, I can have any custom value that I want. It doesn't require custom tokens. You can use your existing color tokens. We can get rid of all of the transparency tokens, okay? But you're like, Kevin, nobody wants, that's good, that's good, but, and, and I understand the advantages but you're asking me to do a lot of typing. You're and you're and you're asking me to change my workflow. I used to have this primary, you know, uh, primary trans ten, primary ultra dark trans twenty. I, I'm trained to use that, Kevin. You're gonna take that away. You're gonna make me learn this color mix function. Okay, no, no, actually, we're not. This is where visual development environments. One area, obviously, there's a thousand ways that they help, okay? But this is yet another area where they come in very handy. What happens if I write primary trans 17 and I hit semicolon or tab, I'm sorry, uh, tab to autocomplete that in etch now? What? I, I just got exactly what I would have gotten with a whole library of tokens, except... I get the custom too. I can do whatever percentage from from one to ninety nine. I can do it now. Etch is going to parse that out into a color mix function into the color space that I need to be using. Using the thing that I asked. For. I mean, you could. Can you do this with any of the shades? Primary semi dark trans twenty eight. Okay. Look at this. There aren't even in the current library semi dark transparencies. But with this new color mix function and with Etch's new ability to parse existing syntax into the new workflow, into the new format, 
you get access to any transparency you want with no library sitting behind it to load. We get rid of all of the bloat, you get all of the benefits, and you don't have to type. You get to use the exact same variable syntax that you used before. And you're probably wondering, but Kevin, does that work in the style panel, right? If I'm a style panel kind of guy, can I go in here, background color, and do primary, and then semi-dark trans uh, 87? Why, yes, you can. Why, yes, you can. And then if you want to dial it into something else, you don't have to change the tone. Like this, bang, bang, bang. I mean, it's whatever you want to do, okay? So analyze this video. Think about this for a minute, right? So you've got this, this new thing happening where the builder's doing the work for you. Um, you're way more flexible, way less bloat. Just walk through it in your head. Are there any limitations? Like, do you... Why should we keep doing this whole library of transparency thing? Is there any rhyme or reason for doing that anymore? Shouldn't we just be doing this? Isn't this the workflow we should be adopting? You tell me in the comments. First of all, hit like on this video, then go down to the comments, drop a like. I need to hear your thoughts. I need to know what you think about this. Um, does it make sense to you? Does it seem easy enough? Uh, do you see the flexibility? Do you see the benefits? Do you want to switch to a workflow like this? Let me know.